Subscribe if you want to raid, but you're always missing a sixth person. Hey, friendly, and if you struggle with mechanics or you need someone to break down the exact steps and why, then you're in the right place. Some of the other guys on my channel just might help you and your team out. This channel's content is focused on helping you achieve what you want to achieve. So let's not waste any more time, let's get into it. This video is a step-by-step -step guide to the classic Destiny 2 dungeon, Prophecy. Here's some loadout ideas for the whole dungeon. But if you have Xenophage, you can use it for the whole dungeon basically. Starting up, yes, you can actually hop on your Sparrow for a bit. And this first section will be the Bungie Classic. Let's learn the main dungeon mechanic. If you're familiar with how Gambit works, you're in a good spot. Because the main mechanic involves moats and doing something with these moats. As shown, using the moats results in progression of the dungeon. There are only two kinds of moats, light moats and dark moats. You use these light or dark moats to cleanse the respective light or dark geysers. you find them in pairs, fours, or threes. Next, as shown, get close or within the geyser and press your shoot button to cleanse. Getting moats. You're going to notice an abundance of taken knights. Often there's more than one and can get very aggressive. But killing them is the only way to get moats. But there are light and dark moats, and you might need both to cleanse all geysers, so how do you get one versus the other? Well, it all depends if you're standing in the darkness or if you're covered in shadow or if you're exposed in the light. You can tell if you're standing in either by the light or dark smoke on the edges of your screen. And there's even a sound cue. Take a listen. So if you're standing in the darkness and you can confirm you have dark smoke on your screen, then, if you're still in the darkness, at the very moment the Taken Knight dies, it will drop dark motes. Same thing for light motes. If you're in the light at the moment the Taken Knight dies, it will drop light motes. So you might need to hide behind cover to get into darkness. Try using a damage over time attack or weapon and find either your darkness or your light hiding spot while the knight dies. It's a good way to get the motes you want. Some more motes info. Like Gambit, they don't last forever. You have a moat timer that you can extend by picking up more motes. You can only pick up 5 max of either moat type. Once at max motes, go to the corresponding geyser and cleanse. Just note, if you're at max motes and you use your class ability, you lose all your motes. At max motes, use jump melee to travel faster. Basically, there are two main steps. How many or which geysers must be cleansed, and then getting those motes to do the cleansing. So practice gathering the correct motes and cleansing the correct geysers. Eventually, you'll cleanse enough and open the door to the first real encounter. Loto ideas suggest bringing a sword. To start, touch Tolan, which is a flying wisp in the middle. The boss is initially shielded and immune, so we need to break the shield. We need to cleanse all four of those geysers with their corresponding moat type. And remember your training, stay in the darkness or go into the light. So get going, killing knights and getting the correct motes. This arena can be tricky, so make sure you check your screen to confirm you're in darkness or you're in light. Use cover to your advantage to force either dark or light motes. Collect all the dark or light motes that you need, either get in the geyser or super close to it, and cleanse. Here, me and my teammate Panda are both cleansing right now. After you cleanse the last one, it's time for DPS. Try dropping a well right on the boss and go to town on him. Thunder Crash works really well here, or honestly any burst damage. You'll be fine, he's a pushover. Be mindful of the following. He has a push attack, so be careful. He loves to use his push attack, so I like using the sword to counter it. It's also easy to damage him with the sword and get past his giant shield. Once he's dead, jump into the center portal to the next area, Wasteland Blight section. To get past this, search the desert for blights. It shouldn't be too hard to recognize. Once you spot some blights, head over to it. I recommend orienting yourself. Starting from spawn, go slightly northwest. Avoid the invisible minotaur. And slightly to the east, you'll see a set of bones. From there, as you turn left to the west, you'll see a Clovis Engineering Clovis Brace sign. Looking at this map, northwest of where you spawn is the Clovis Brace sign. To the right is a set of fossil bones. So you find some taken blights. Each set will have three blights. Find Tolan in the middle of each set. Destroy all three blights. Return to Tolan. Touch him and he'll lead you to the next set of blights. Find blights, clean him up, approach Tolan and follow him to the next set of blights. Do this a total of three times. Upon finishing the last set of blights, he'll show you the way to the next area. Follow his general direction and look for a lit up door. Note how this one's not lit. Cube room. You enter a complex room with a giant floating cube, along with objects like the ones you cleanse at the start of the dungeon. Now the cube, there are six sides, meaning we're gonna do something six times. Approach Tolan in the middle to start. Same mechanic applies, but this time you have control of spawning the knights. As shown, knights will only spawn when the snipers are killed. And hello. Looking around, you see a total of four geysers you can potentially cleanse. So which one do you cleanse? Look up in the ceiling and look for Toland. He'll be floating way up high, marking one of the four geysers as the correct one to cleanse. The correct geyser is the one right below him. In contrast, do not cleanse this darkness geyser because he is not floating above it. In this case, it's lightness. Yep, he's floating above it. And time to cleanse. Then jump onto the center platform and move on. You're actually in the same room, it's just rotated. Then continue looking for Toland and which geyser he's marking. Tolan is telling us which geyser to cleanse and therefore which moats to gather, but it also corresponds to this side of the cube marked by the arrow. So what are we doing? By identifying the correct geyser, gathering the correct maximum moats, 
and going over to that correct geyser, which has been marked by Toland, cleansing it, we are completing that side of the cube. Notice how this side of the cube glowed after we cleansed the geyser on the same side. As shown, all sides will eventually be filled in with that symbol, so just follow Tolan. Just to really drive this point home, assume this is your current room layout. You have four geysers. Now assume you see Tolan floating above this geyser, so you must collect light motes and cleanse this geyser. And rinse and repeat. Keep in mind, if you do not find Tolan floating above any of the geysers, and you instead see him all the way up in the middle of the ceiling up there, all this means is find a side of the cube that has not been filled in yet. As shown, I'm marking this with this green arrow. Then, cleanse the geyser that corresponds to that side of the cube. In contrast, do not choose to cleanse the geyser that corresponds to that side of the cube. It's already been filled in. You really do have to examine the cube to know which side's geyser to cleanse. As shown, I could cleanse this darkness geyser I'm walking past because the cube side has not been filled in yet, but apparently I decided to cleanse this light geyser because this side has also not been filled in yet. Remember, the goal is to completely fill in all sides of the cube. If you aren't doing this, you'll be in here forever. With all sides filled in, you'll finally get to the boss. There are two copies of the boss you need to kill. And as shown, Xenophage does wonders against this boss. Honestly, anything does, even this fusion rifle. So, grab your loot and climb up out of here. Back in the wasteland, follow this guy. Ribbon Road. Take your time here. You just need to travel all the way down. You can choose to use your sparrow or walk, or just platform as well. Once you reach the very, very end, you'll get pulled up like a tractor beam. If you're having trouble getting pulled up, try what my teammate suggested. Maybe Jump up run. into it and pull out your sparrow. Final boss. Loadout ideas. I haven't tried, but Merciless might be good. If you can hit your shots, linears are also very good. So here's your room with three cleanse geysers. Very simple, just cleanse all of them. Keep an eye out though, in this encounter, there's a slight delay. Notice how there's a little delay for the geysers to change to their final form. As shown, it's going to be two darkness geyser and one light geyser. Each geyser has a copy of the boss harassing you, but you'll be fine. Do your thing, collect the correct modes, and cleanse the correct geyser. Cleansing the geysers will make the boss go away. Replacing the boss will be an ogre. You can kill it if you want, but it's not that big of a deal. So your geysers might look like this, or might look like this, or next time it will be this set. You could get all light geysers. Once all geysers are cleansed, meet in the middle. I'll narrate a bit here. As you spawn in, the boss will actually stay on the center middle platform for a little bit. He'll actually stay there for a lot longer than you think. Do as much damage as you can, but he'll begin to teleport further away. Platform and try to keep up with him, all while avoiding snipers. Keep up with him because he has a wipe mechanic. You must stay within this ring. It's a ring that surrounds the boss itself, and I know it's hard to see, but being outside of this ring and being too far from the boss will increase what's called dark entropy. Too much dark entropy and you die. As long as you've moved back into the ring, it'll bring your stacks of dark entropy back down. Watch out for his Taken Wave Kamehameha because it will teleport you far away. You should be able to one phase, if not simply repeat the geyser cleansing phase and get back to this DPS. To visualize, the boss is really just teleporting and running away from you. If you don't one phase him, step into the portal at the end and you'll be teleported back to the initial room but just flipped. So rinse and repeat, look at what geysers must be cleansed, it's going to be all light geysers in this scenario. So go ahead and click all your light motes, cleanse, kill ogre if you want, and step back into the center. Head back into DPS and finish it off. As you can see, all the bosses are not chunky at all. Some other helpful tips. If you're having trouble with Taken Knights and their aggression, blinding GLs are great. Take a listen to how much quieter and calmer things are. Nice. Xenophage is just awesome in this dungeon. I hope this guide helps to get more people to play this dungeon. It's fun, has an amazing aesthetic, and a simple mechanic. Anyways, comment below what helped you and what didn't, and what guide or mission do you guys want to see next? And maybe I'll see you guys for day one. Later.